Michael, you've just described this plant here, which I'm not going to touch because it's quite toxic. Looks innocuous. Tell us about why we have to be so aware of this. Sure. Um, so what you can see here, just uh, climbing through this melaleuca, is a plant called a moth vine or cruel vine, or also known in iNaturalist as the white bladder flower. Now, this plant um, has got a few nasty attributes to it. Uh, the first being its sap. So it's a real issue when it's growing in areas um, in through the suburbs, which it commonly does, in that people like hand weeding things um, or cutting through the through the any of the tissues, it will produce this really milky latex, which can burn your skin because it's co quite caustic, very very um, very caustic. Um, the second thing about this vine, which is interesting, uh, is the reason why it's called moth vine. And uh, moth vine has a white flower which becomes fragrant at night time and attracts moths to it. Uh, mm -hmm. The moths feed with their proboscis, they're called proboscis, which they extend into the flower to get the nectar. And interestingly, cruel vine, the common name, um, came about because moths get their proboscis stuck. So they basically, it latches on to the proboscis and holds onto the moth for quite an extended period of time, sometimes long enough for the animal to die. Um, but essentially what it's trying to do is attach a little capsule called a pollinia. And a pollinia is a capsule which contains pollen and in a similar way that orchids do um, to their pollinators, the pollinator then moves away, puts its proboscis into another flower and it's like a lock and key. And that pollinia will fit snugly into a nice little slot and fertilise the next flower. Um, unfortunately, depending on the width of the proboscis, many moths get stuck and, and die in the flower. So it's very interesting in that respect. In so, terms of environmental weed, um, this one, as you said, looks a little bit innocuous. It's not terribly over, overbearing at the moment, but certainly they do have the potential to totally smother vegetation. Um, they become quite a very vigorous environmental weed in the right spot, or their right spot, um, and unfortunately it's to the detriment of all the other vegetation around them. And the moths, does, is it detrimental to the moth habitat and is that, does that become a problem for moth life? Um, certainly it is detrimental to the individuals that get stuck there and, and, and don't escape um, with their proboscis. But in terms of the habitat, well, it depends on the species, but likely, yes. So there's a whole range of species that this could de definitely swamp out. Um, so interestingly, you're right in thinking that, you know, the moth might be getting a free feed from this, but actually what it's doing is, in fact, losing its food plants, a caterpillar food plants. So yeah, it's, it is detrimental. Um, and as I mentioned before, the caustic sap is, is quite nasty. Uh, it does have quite a large fruit, which looks like a choco, and chocos also grow on vines. Mm -hmm. So to the, to the average gardener who's not quite sure of um, what things are or how to identify weeds, um, it could be mistaken easily for a choco. And if the gardeners were to cut into those large fruits, uh, they would also be exposed to that caustic sap on their skin and end up with burns on their hands. And it can also get into your eyes and um, if it gets into your eyes, it can certainly have effects on your eyes and if not just damaging them, probably can send you blind too. So, yep, pretty oh, nasty. Wow, yeah. And so in its form, we could miss this, but it sounds like from what you've said, that when it takes off, it can swamp plants and so it'd be very obvious for us looking for it. Absolutely, yeah, mm. absolutely. It often oh. grows um, in through the suburbs as well, in people's gardens, and you sometimes see it growing up fences, cyclone fences, um, in areas that aren't p potentially maintained as well, around sports fields, those sort of areas, um, and certainly along the creeks. So it's something that is becoming um, an increasing problem on the Darabin Creek and something that we're seeing more of. So yeah, it's, um, it's one that I would steer clear of and definitely report it on iNaturalist rather than trying to handle it yourself. Yep. Great, thank you.